Every coffee needs a lotus. Lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana all. <laughs> Distance will always be a problem. So choose a home that makes life more fulfilling by bringing you closer to everything that matters the most. Arezzo Place Passing. Live fulfilled. Finma Properties. Making room to build your future.
more ways to extend a helping hand. The financial programs we design with our business partners focus on creating a safety net for devoted employees. We believe secure and happy employees are essential. The vision of Frontier Software is to supply organizations throughout the world with an integrated, secure, common human resource database. This can be accessed anywhere, anytime, by any device using the latest web technology. Founded on commitment, built on quality, unrivaled in delivery. Frontier Software is a world leader in integrated human resource solutions. For over three decades, we've been expanding into new territories, investing in fresh talent, and developing the technology to deliver world-class HR and payroll management software to over 1,600 organizations across the globe, both large and small. Our leading edge products are the result of our forward thinking commitment to excellence and incorporate a comprehensive range of software modules. We annually invest over 20% of our profits into research and development, ensuring that new products are available year on year, so you get the best possible solution for the ever-changing needs of your company. Our products are easy to implement and simple to use allowing customers the most straightforward method to perform even the most complex tasks. Customers can choose to license our software or utilize a SaaS subscription, including a fully managed payroll outsourcing service. Our software is browser-based, eliminating the need for any additional desktop applications and comes in a range of languages. Software updates can be made without resorting to technical support using our innovative import management module. Content is fully customizable by you without the need for an IT expert. Our proven security systems offer peace of mind by inhibiting unauthorized access to sensitive information. Customer service is our number one priority. Our support teams host regular focus groups allowing you to network with other users and get the most out of your product. Frontier Software is the global brand that sets the standard in human resource management software solutions. Our products continue to develop. Our vision constantly evolves. And our ongoing commitment to the needs of our partners is as strong today as it's ever been. Join us and together we can map out a new frontier. We at Frontier Software look forward to working with your organization and your dedicated professionals. After all, your success is our success.
Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Juicy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto ko mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Eluada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. It really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. Every coffee needs a lotus. Lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana all. <laughs>
ako nang nagpa-practice mag-bike ng anak ko. Nandito ako nung nag-birthday si Mami. Dito ako nag-celebrate ng wedding anniversary namin. Distance will always be a problem. So choose a home that makes life more fulfilling by bringing you closer to everything that matters the most. Arezzo Place Passing. Live fulfilled. Finma Properties. Making room to build your future. together using new tools and keeping to our new habits to protect the people we love. At work, let's all be good team players. A little distance between us today will be good for us all tomorrow. 
a little care can protect the one thing that means the world to us. So let's do our part. The views and opinions expressed by the speaker, host, commentator, or other third party in Arriva webinars, e-learning events, and or virtual masterclass are those of the speaker, host, commentator, or third party and do not necessarily reflect and represent the views and opinions of Arriva. Furthermore, Arriva does not warrant express or imply the merchantability and fitness for a particular purpose of any product information, service or process presented by the speaker, host, commentator or third party, and Arriva specifically disclaims any legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, completeness or usefulness of any product information, service or process presented. Finally, material or information presentation, opinion, process or service by on any trade name, trademark, manufacturer or otherwise during Arriva webinars, e-learning events and or virtual masterclass do not constitute or imply Arriva's endorsement or recommendation of such opinion, process, service, item or organization. us right now. Welcome to another free free e-learning session brought to you by Arriva Academy. My name is Irish Malanda Samson and I will be your host and moderator for today. Okay, welcome to our strategic downsizing in the time of COVID-19, reducing team members in a legal, fair, and humane way. So before I introduce our speaker and before we start, I would like first to um, greet our out of the country participants and they are watching from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Good afternoon, Singapore, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Jakarta, Indonesia, and Bangkok, Thailand. Welcome to Arriva e-learning session. And now, of course, in order for us to have a smooth flow of our e-learning session, here are the following house rules. Who are the first time viewers of our webinar? Please type hi in the chat box now and let us know where are you watching right now. Good afternoon, Mom Leia Hermosa. Okay, any anyone from Quezon City, Makati, from out of town, please type in hi if this is your first time watching our webinar. Ms. Hazel, welcome po. Okay, Ms. Stella Marie, Josefa Apao. Okay, Gurney Alegre is from Quezon City. Welcome to Arriva webinar, Jessa Sionilo and Marianne Baliscot. Good afternoon, 
as well to Miss Kesely from Tarlac and Jennifer Duenas. Okay. So let's do an audio check. Please use the following codes. Type in 111 to show if you can hear me loud and clear. Okay, thank you, Maurice. Marge from Pasig City, thank you. Jocelyn, 111. Okay, type in 222 if you cannot hear me. No sound at all. 2121 means the sound is breaking up or there is a log and question mark if you don't understand anything. Thank you, Cheryl. Mary, Vanessa, 111. Thank you, Mavic. Ms. Mavic, Rochelle, thank you. Leia Hermosa, okay. I am loud and clear and audible. Thank you so much. Moving on. We will be having a quick break later after the presentation of our guest speaker and before we move on to our question and answer portion. Okay, Maria Teresa Rivera's first time to watch Arriva webinar and she is from Bulacan. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, participants' microphones will be temporarily disabled by the administrator during discussion to avoid interruptions. For questions and clarifications during the provided time after each topic, please click the raise hand button for the administrator to enable the microphone for live questions. Later, at the Q&A portion, we will entertain live questions from our Zoom participants, okay? Type in your questions at the Q&A box again, at the Q&A box. One question at a time will be entertained. For comments and feedback, please scan the QR code. This will be directed to our feedback form. Please send us your comments, suggestions, and suggested topics to discuss in order for us to improve our future e-learning sessions. Hi to Ms. Presi Manaloto, who is watching at our YouTube page. Thank you for watching us. And now I will be introducing our speaker. But first and foremost, please let me know if you're ready. Have your pens and papers with you. Please type in Arriva in the chat box now. Let me know if you're ready. Okay. Let's check. Thank you, Vanessa. Jean, Gurley, Hazel. Thank you, Arriva. Okay. So our speaker has 12 re rich years of experience in the field of law. A graduate of UP College of Law, he is currently the managing partner for legal access law offices, a law uh, office firm based in Eastwood City, Philippines. He is also the author of three books and his article have been featured on Entrepreneur Magazine, WhenInManila.com and his legal blog, TheLegalGuide.ph. He also gives monthly workshops for legal topics offered to the public, particularly labor law and employee discipline. In addition, he serves on the board of trustee for the Philippine Advocates for Consultants and Trainers, a nationwide association of workshop leaders. He believes that the part of lawyer's duty is to spread awareness and empower the people by educating them. He will simply converse with you using real life stories to let the law come to life. Everyone, without further ado, let us all welcome Attorney Erwin Sagala. Hey guys. Hello, Attorney. Good afternoon. So I, I have a question for the participants. How many of you would like some clear directions on how to proceed during this time of COVID? Type number one in the chat box. I want to see. Clear directions, good. And how many of you would like some help managing your team members? Type number two, let's see. Ayan, I'm happy to see that. Uh, that's what we'll be tackling this afternoon. So guys, uh, this is my third talk with Ariva and uh, welcome. My name is Attorney Erwin Sagala and welcome to our talk this afternoon, strate uh, Strategic Downsizing in the Time of COVID-19, Reducing Team Members in a Legal, Fair, and Humane Way. Okay, so before I get started, of course, I want to thank my <laughs> ever uh, supportive supporter, Irish and JM. Thank you so much for having me back. Uh, it's always a pleasure to help out uh, uh, your participants and your viewers. It's always an enjoyable experience. And um, aside from thanking Irish and JM, of course, I want to thank you guys, the participants, because you are taking the time to learn about the different kinds of uh, remedies that are available to you under the law. And I think that's commendable. Thank you so much for spending the time 
with me this afternoon. And and I promise to make it as uh, fruitful and informative as I possibly can. Now, what exactly are we supposed to talk about this afternoon? So kung mapapansin nyo sa, sa title natin, parang medyo may laman eh, na legal, fair, and humane. And that's on purpose because um, actually, retrenchment, oh, Pasensya na, may dumaan na ambulad siya. <laughs> maingay, maingay. Okay, I hope that makes it uh, clearer na, guys. Huh? So, we'll be tackling the three areas that I think people need help with when coming to a decision whether to undergo retrenchment proceedings. So, attorney, ano ba yung retrenchment? Retrenchment po, ang ibig sabihin, pagbabawas po ng mga tao. So, tatanggal, tatanggalin po natin yung employment ng ilang tao. But again, it's not as simple as it seems. There are three aspects. The first of all is legal. I will be teaching you what the law says. Ano ba sinasabi? Pwede ba talaga ito? Uh, kung sakaling pwede, paano ba gawin na hindi kami pwede mabalikan? So, that's the first portion of our talk. Next is, oo nga, kung sakaling sinabi ng batas na pwedeng gawin, how do I do it in a fair way? Di ba? Paano ko pipiliin kung sino sa team members ko yung uh, yung eligible for retrenchment? So I will be talking about that. Medyo mahirap po na topic ito for for a business owner or a manager or a boss, but these are things we have to contend with uh, in this time. And then finally, on number one, di ba? Legal, pwede ba yan or hindi? Number two, fair. Paano gawin fairly para malaman natin kung sino yung maapektuhan? And then number three, how do we do it in a humane way? How do we respect yung pagkatao naman ng empleyado who will be subjected to this proceeding? So taklo po yan. Um, most people think kapag abogado po, naka walang puso yan, uh, ang tutok lang yan, whether legal or hindi. No, 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 no. It can't be a singular decision. It has to cover all three for it to be effective. Okay, so by the end of this afternoon, hopefully matransfer ko sa inyo some thoughts I have about it, some uh, recommendations, and uh, along the line, magkukwento ko a little bit about my experiences helping my clients and students undergo that. Sounds good? If that sounds good, press, uh, please chat OK in the chat box. I want to see. OK. Ayan, mabilis. <laughs> Mukhang happy naman sila, Irish, dun sa topics natin. For yes, Atorny. Well, actually, this topic is very sensitive. Especially nowadays, now, mm -hmm. during this I pandemic. Understand. But we have to, as I business know. owners, di ba? We have to do uh, that. Um, not a lot of people know, but uh, I run a blog, a uh, legal blog. It's called legalguy.ph. Actually, introduced ko mamaya yun, but... On a weekly basis, I get questions on this. So sinabi ko nga sa sarili ko, Irish, might as well, I'll do a talk kasi medyo umuulit-ulit yung tanong. Might as well, uh, matulong ako na yung mga tao. Uh, now, we have 97 participants. Malapit na pumalo ng 100. Or oh, at least ito, we get to help 100 people all at the same time. Di ba? By the way, aside from Zoom, attorney, we also have viewers from uh, FB and LinkedIn and YouTube. Oh. Well, the more the merrier. Uh, again, as I said, these are very confusing times, and the more people we can help get over this uh, together, diba? it will be better for everyone. Now, guys, uh, before we get started, uh, parang minsan nakakailang kasi na makikinig ka from someone you don't know. Would it be okay with you guys if I tell you a little bit about myself before we get started? Please press okay in the chat box if that's okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Attorney Irwin Zagala, but to friends and family, they call me Attorney Zag. Now, since naging estudyante na kita during this talk, feel free to call me by my nickname. So, uh, I'm Attorney Zag to uh, most um, students and and clients, and I'm a third-generation lawyer. What does that mean? Mula sa pagkalolo all the way to the magulang on both sides, mga abogado po kami, and I happen to be an only child. So, wala po talaga akong pupuntahan uh, mula pagkabata pa. Mukhang doon na talaga papunta yung career track ko. So, so back in college, I finished uh, legal management with Ateneo, and then I uh, studied my... Uh, uh, Bachelor of Laws and got it from uh, University of the Philippines, Diliman. Uh, my legal career started back in law school. I was a working student, actually working for uh, a human rights organization. So, so during 
during uh, law school, uh, I was liaising with government agencies at the OJ, Supreme Court, uh, PNP, and I was helping out administer criminal law here in the Philippines, not just with local uh, uh, agencies. I was also liaising between them and international organizations. I was working for uh, Asia Foundation and uh, USAID at the time. And, and from that experience, I learned how the law affects society as a whole. Very valuable. Nakita ko na parang, okay, so ito pala ang epekto ng batas sa society. After I passed the bar in 2006, I went into private practice. Uh, I, I applied in a law firm in Ortigas, and for two years, I was an associate. There, I practiced private law. So that includes labor, criminal, civil, admin, and the focus was on individuals and businesses. So from there, I, I learned how the law affects individuals and businesses. So I na konti yung ano ko, focus. Now, after two years of that, I tried my hand at government service. Uh, uh, I applied and got accepted as a legal officer for one of our GOCCs, which has over 10,000 employees nationwide. And, and very valuable experience. Uh, I got the chance to craft policies and enforce policies on a nationwide basis. From that experience, I learned how our regulation uh, is created and enforced. And as a bonus, uh, I got assignments from the GOCC to do teaching. I taught the law nationwide. So, so from there, I understood that, oh, I want to teach law. So, so after five years with the GOCC, I kind of felt a longing. I said, I think it's about time to move on. And I decided to put up my own law firm. Um, by this time, I was already practicing for around eight years. Sabi ko, pwede na to, medyo hinug na. Uh, I have enough experience. I have enough contacts to be able to uh, run an, an office independently. But I didn't want my law firm to be just another law firm. I, I wanted to be able to help people in a deeper way. And, and upon reflection, I noticed that regardless of what function I did, whether as an NGO worker, private practitioner, government uh, officer, um, there were always three things that the people had in re uh, with regard to their relationship with the law. Number one, they always found the law intimidating. Nakakatakot yung batas. Eh, minsan hindi pa nakakatulong na nakakatakot yung mga abogado kausapin or tanongin. So, so ang nagiging effect neto, when people are intimidated by the law, the intimidation prevents them from taking action. Dahil nga takot, hindi makagalaw. And finally, dahil hindi makagalaw, they actually get into deeper trouble. So kawawa eh. Sabi ko, how can I change that? And that's when it hit me. I can actually marry the two things that I love doing. Uh, uh, being a practitioner, a uh, lawyer, uh, with, regard to the, with regards to the law, and teaching it. So I, cre uh, I, along with my partners, we created Legal Access Law Offices. It's an education-based law practice based in Eastwood City. We cater primarily to SMEs and family business. What that means is hindi lang po kami nagpo-provide ng legal services. We actually take the extra step, pinitrain po namin yung mga kliyente, ano po yung sinasabi ng batas, so that they understand it and it's easier for them to understand why our recommendations are this way and this way and that way. In addition, in 2014, we created our training arm. It's Legal Guide Philippines. So uh, the uh, Legal Guide Philippines is housed in www.legalguide.ph. There we provide free articles, tips, uh, workshops, uh, as well as books. So, so the main mission of uh, Legal Guide Philippines, we simplify the law to help people make better choices. Again, papasimplihin ko yung batas so that makagalaw ka. You understand what it says, you understand how the law can help you, and you uh, get motivated to move. And that's exactly what I intend to do for you guys right now. This afternoon, I want to simplify as much as I can, as much as I can, huh? uh, uh, strategic downsizing. Why? It's very, very apparent to me that this is one of the touchier topics when it comes to clients and uh, business owners. Mahirap, masakit magtanggal na tao, correct? Masakit na nga eh, eh hindi mo pa maintindihan. So, so aside from masakit emotionally, nakakatakot pa kasi what if you do something wrong? Diba? Mababalikan pa ba ako? Eh right now, you're, you're trying to do a very delicate balancing act. How do you ensure the continuation of your business, but at the same time, as much as possible, how do you take care of your employees, correct? 
O kung may nakaka-relate dyan, can you please type in the chat box? I can relate. I can relate. Kasi ako, yung mga nakakausap ko, uh, personally, these are the stories that uh, I get. And and uh, you guys being here in this webinar class, that says a lot to me that you guys probably are undergoing the same thing. Diba? Ayan, no? Ang dami talaga nakaka-relate. So, so I designed this uh, afternoon session Basically, I wanted to replicate na, kunwari, hinatak ninyo ako sa coffee shop. Attorney, can I have one hour of your time? Baka naman pwedeng explain mo sa akin how this works and and at least malinawan lang ako. So let's replicate that. Kunwari, nagkapihan lang tayo, di ba? Tapos, uh, I have one hour to tell you as much as I can about what I understand and what my tips are. And hopefully, you walk away from here with a clearer direction and you know what to do. Okay? Now, uh, okay, just some uh, details. Number one, attorney, parang hindi gumagalaw yung PowerPoint mo. Hindi talaga gagalaw yan. I opted not to uh, do a PowerPoint for this session. Why? I want you guys to focus on me. I am just talking to you. I will do my best to try and simplify everything. What I've, what I've seen is the more visuals, usually yung mga tao, especially if it's an emotional topic like this one, they get lost in the visuals. Imbis na nakikinig, na as if magkausap tayo para mas bumaon yung message, mas bumaon yung understanding, mas tumututok pa sa visual. So forget PowerPoint, you will not see a PowerPoint from me this afternoon. And I feel it's unnecessary because I will be able to explain everything. So just focus uh, on me and what I have to say. Okay? So, baka mamaya may mga magtanong, attorney, can you send a copy of the PowerPoint? Wala po. Wala po tayong PowerPoint. Okay? Uh, let's get that out of the way habang maaga. Now, a few house rules before we get started. Ito, malapit na, malapit na, guys. Don't worry. Number one, what we're talking about here, this is considered legal information. It's not legal advice. Attorney, ano pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Well, legal information, I will talk about the topic and try to deliver the information to you. Legal advice is the application of that information to your particular situation. So basically, kinostom fit para sa sitwasyon ninyo. How can we do that? Eh, yung, yung transmission of information, it's just one way. So I want you to treat everything here as legal information. What does that mean? Number one, you're responsible if you apply it. Okay, before you apply it, guys, check it out with your legal, with your HR, para lang panigurado na pasok siya sa situation ninyo. Okay, and if you choose to apply it, you are solely responsible. I don't want to get any emails. Attorney, in-apply ko yung tinuro mo dun sa, ano, sa webinar. Eh. Hindi naman gumana. Eh, eh, guys, again, this is information. Treat this as a starting point. Okay? So, so uh, be sure to check it out with a professional before you apply it. And in case you want to apply it, you are solely responsible for any consequences. Okay, malinaw yan, ha? Okay, next. Uh, uh, if you guys need help, I am available via attorneyzag at legalguide.ph Kasi sometimes yung iba, attorney, sinabi mo, ito yung information, you check it out with your legal Eh, wala po kami legal Depending on where you are, guys, uh, let me know if you're looking for a trustworthy legal team And depending on where you are, I'll, I'll make recommendations We have a lot of friends naman who are um, accepting clients at this point in time Okay, and then next is participation. Guys, for those of you guys who can, for those of you guys uh, who are participating in the chat box, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's feedback for me. I, I can't tell you guys how how hard it is to lecture to a webcam versus yung dati. Dati kasi I used to do this almost on a monthly basis. Kaharap mo yung mga tao. I get to see how you guys are understanding it, kamusta yung pick up, may mga tanong ba? Right now, I'm kind of visually impaired. I can't see you guys. So so every time I ask you guys for for uh, feedback, please participate, okay? Yan na lang ang pinangahawakan ko. It's my only link to you guys. And, and I, want, I really want to make sure that I'm able to transmit as much as I can. Agree? If yes, please put it in the chat box. Agree, agree. And don't worry, okay. Attorney Sag, I will be here throughout your presentation. <laughs> okay, good to hear. Okay, so uh, I, I guess that's it for my um, um, introduction. And, and I think uh, we're ready to rock. 
First off, okay, so sasagutin ko na yung tanong ng karamihan. Uh, let's get it out of the way. Attorney, pwede bang magtanggal ng tao in the time of COVID? Okay, so guys, ang daming tanong na lumalabas ng ganito. And, and there are some employees na nakikita ko sa mga forum, nakikita ko sa feedback, mga tanong ng mga emple- ng mga kliyente ko, ha? Na, attorney, lumapit sa amin yung, ano, yung empleyado. Eh, dinidisciplinary... Uh, procedure ko, ang sagot ba naman sa akin, subukan niyo ako tanggalin, bawal magtanggal ngayon dahil COVID, blah, blah, blah. So, so um, there seems to be a lot of uh, misconceptions regarding uh, what the rules are when it comes to COVID. So, I want to make some things clear. Number one, disciplinary procedures were never, I repeat, never suspended. So, kung sakaling may violation during the time of COVID, pwede pa rin po natin i-hold accountable ang mga empleyado. Now, next question. Attorney, pwede ba talaga tayong magtanggal ng tao through retrenchment or other authorized causes during COVID? Yes, the right was never suspended. Let me be clear with that. What the dole said was employer, uh, employers, managers, owners, as much as possible, pangalagaan po natin yung mga empleyado. However, it never prevented the exercise of termination powers. So let's be clear with that. Guys, ha? Malinaw na ba? I hope so. So so that understanding is very crucial for everything that I'm going to be saying afterwards. Okay? So para lang sagutin uli yung tanong, pwede bang magtanggal kahit na pandemic, kahit na COVID? Yes, pwede po. What's the basis? It's the same basis that we've always had. The labor code was not suspended as a result of the pandemic. So kung sakali may disciplinary measures, uh, uh, may authorized causes for termination, it can be done. All that the dol, uh, the dol said was try to avoid it as much as possible out of consideration to employees. And I agree with that. Okay. Next question is, attorney, ano ba tong sinasabi na downsizing? Ano ba tong sinasabi na na retrenchment. Okay, so retrenchment, it's one of the authorized causes. What's the word again? Authorized causes for termination. Attorney, why are you making a distinction? Bakit parang ini-emphasize mo? Okay, kasi dalawang klase yung pwedeng grounds para magtanggal ka ng tao under the labor code. One is just causes, the other is authorized causes. Very important that you understand the difference between the two. Just causes, ibig sabihin just, makatarungan, tama lang. Ito yung mga rason kung bakit tama lang natanggalin mo yung empleyado. What are some examples? Minakawan ka, hindi nagpapapasok, uh, pabaya sa trabaho, sa madaling salita, just causes, uh, ito po, may kasalanan ginawa yung empleyado. That's why karapat dapat lang pong tanggalin natin. Okay? Uh, legally speaking, the proper uh, uh, terminology is uh, just causes to include serious misconduct and willful disobedience, um, uh, gross and habitual neglect, uh, wedding commission of a crime. Yeah, so uh, yun yung mga yun. Uh, if you want a fuller list, you can just Google just causes for termination. Now, ang focus natin for this talk is authorized causes. Authorized causes meaning, okay, Wala namang ginawang kasalanan yung tao, yung empleyado. However, because of the circumstances that the business finds itself in, no choice po yung negosyo kung hindi magtatanggal ng tao. Kasi ang sinasabi naman po ng batas, binabalansi po yan. Na parang, oo nga, we're trying to protect um, employees' rights, pero at the same time, we're also trying to protect employers' rights. Kailangan po balansi yan. Eh. So, ito pong authorized causes, these are certain circumstances wherein, wala, again, lilinawin ko po, ah, ito malinaw, walang kasalanan yung empleyado, but because of the circumstances, pinapayagan po ng batas na magtanggal ka. What are examples? Number one, installation of labor-saving devices. Basically, napalitan po kayo ng robot. Di ba? There are Supreme Court uh, cases saying na kung sakaling uh, may machine po na pumalit dun sa function ng isang tao, an employer isn't required to maintain the employee kung may gumagawa na. Di ba? Kasi unfair din naman na bayad ka ng bayad ng sweldo, may makinarya ka na na gumagawa. So that's one example of an authorized cost. The, the particular authorized cost that I want to talk about this afternoon is retrenchment. Anong ibig sabihin ng retrenchment? Let's simplify things. Uh, 
in one sentence, this is how I would say it. Tagilid yung negosyo ko, uh, there are serious losses, and ang nakikita ko na lang way magtanggal ng tao for the business to survive. So, uh, under the law, ang sinasabi, ang retrenchment po pwedeng gawin if there are substantial, serious, actual, or imminent losses. So, kapag tagilid po yung negosyo, uh, binibigay po ng option ng batas sa mga employers na magtanggal po or magbawas ng tao to keep the business afloat. Yan po yung pinag-uusapan natin this afternoon. I won't be spending time on the other authorized causes. I will be focusing on retrenchment. Okay, so so malinaw na ba, hopefully malinaw na sa inyo. I'm trying to paint a picture of what retrenchment looks like para when you encounter it in the field, masasabi niyo na, ah, okay, ito nga yun. Okay? So hopefully, hopefully kumakabit po, guys. Ha? Okay, so uh, retrenchment okay so so serious uh, substantial losses ang sinasabi po ng batas dito retrenchment is something that you don't take lightly hindi pwedeng na parang uy paano ba natin tataasan yung profit margin this quarter ay magtanggal ka ng tao diyan no 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 hindi po ganoon ang pinag-uusapan natin ha and 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 uh, guys if you're doing that shame on you uh, lahat ng tao na problema right now and and guys something like this has to go through a very stringent thought process. Guys, we are talking about the careers of people. I only advocate retrenchment as a final solution. Ibig sabihin, ang dami mo nang tinray before ka pang nag-decide na mag-retrench. Okay? And even the law reflects that. You should be able to show na efforts were made before you do retrenchment. Hindi pwedeng, ah, easy solution. Magbawas tayo ng tao. No. You have to be able to show that other efforts were done. And, and when we go to the third part of my talk, uh, that will uh, make sense. Okay, so, so um, in case you are contemplating retrenchment, here's the thought process. Number one, I want you to document ano ba yung mga ways na inexplore na ninyo to be able to keep the business afloat? Well, pwede nagbawas muna kami ng marketing budget, attorney, uh, or, or nag-cost cutting muna kami, or or tinanggal muna namin itong company outing, or ganito-ganito. I want you to document that. Kasi at some point, kung sakaling i-contest yung retrenchment, you have to be able to show that serious efforts were made before you guys decided on retrenchment. Kailangan may ipakita kasi din talagang no other way possible. Ito na po talaga yung last solution. Okay? So please document all of the efforts that you guys made to be able to uh, try to avert, but again, uh, bumagsaka din sa retrenchment. Next, kung sakaling nakapag-decide ka na talaga ng retrenchment, here is the procedure under the labor code. 30 days before, again, how many days? 30. Huwag po natin kakalimutan yung magic number na yan. 30 days before, you have to inform the employee and the dole that you intend to retrench some employees. Okay? So, so in the third part of this talk, I'll teach you how to draft the letter to the employees. But and so far as the dole is concerned, uh, yung notification po na ini-expect nila, I would refer you to Labor Advisory 17-A, if I'm not mistaken. And there it says you should use RKS form number 5 for reporting. So uh, pretty much self-explanatory naman po yung form na yun. Uh, attorney, where can I get that? Very easy po. Uh, you just type www. G O O G L E dot com. <laughs> Google po. Google lang po. Lalabas yan. Okay? So, RKS form, or uh, you can use the search term uh, retrenchment reporting form. Um, more often than not, ang una pong lalabas sa Google uh, natin would be the Dool website. Why am I advocating for that? you have to be updated kasi nagbabago-bago po yan from time to time. Might as well kung sakaling uh, you decide on a certain day, i-double check na lang din ninyo kung yung form po na gagamitin nyo, it's still the form that's recommended by Dole. Wala naman po masama na mag-check, di ba? Let's not be complacent about it. Okay, so 30 days before, di ba? In-inform na natin yung Dole. In-inform na rin natin yung empleyado. Yung sa empleyado po, ang advice ko, you do it through a letter. So, so, uh, attorney, ano ba ang dapat na nakasulat nun? Very simple. Aha, um, the the absolute basics, Mr. Employee, uh, we regret to inform you that the management has decided to retrench your position. 
this uh, retrenchment will be effective on an end date. An end date. Sige nga, kung nakikinig kayo, the date should be at least, how many days? Sige nga, pasulat sa chat. Tignan ko, 30 days. Very good. 30 days after yung, ano, yung uh, uh, effectivity. Attorney, can it be more? Well, yes, no problem with that. Kung sakaling 60 days, I think that's uh, uh, that's permissible. Wag lang kayong bababa ng 30 days. Why? Because that will be considered a violation of your employee's procedural due process. Pwede po kayong kasuhan for that. Okay? Iniiwasan po natin yan. Okay? So, so, okay. so notice dalawa. To Dole, through RKS form number 5, and to the employee. Okay, attorney, any other tips pagdating po dun sa letter na binibigay sa employee? You have to have two copies. Two copies. Attorney, bakit two copies? Kasi yung, iba, yung isa ibibigay mo, yung isa ipapareceive mo. Ang important, importante sa aming mga legal, okay, legal department, yung kopya po na may perma because that is proof that you complied with the 30-day notice requirement. Assuming na magkagulo, yun po yung bala na dadalhin namin sa gera to be able to protect you. Make sense? Okay, so two copies. Attorney, paano kung uh, right now hindi sila nagre-report? Then you send it to uh, their last known address. Ipa LDC niyo or or other private career, I would prefer na na something with a tracking number that would be easier to to uh, use as evidence. Okay? So so you send it. Ang, ang point lang naman po natin, we complied with the 30-day notification period. Uh, okay, so attorney, yung 30 days na yun, bayad po ba kung sakali? Uh, yan ang usual na tanong. For me, if you had them work during that final 30-day period, then uh, I think they should be paid for that. Eh, attorney, uh, what if they're not uh, reporting for work? Depends. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan lang naman ng batas, uh, they should be considered as uh, employed within the next 30 days. So kung ano po yung kalakaran ninyo right now for these people, eh kung sakaling no work, no pay kayo, then I don't see any reason why they should be paid. Kasi as if uh, employed sila dapat for the next 30 days and then uh, you don't treat them any differently. Okay? Siguro during the, the last 30 days, take the opportunity, treat it as if parang turnover ng resignation, di ba? So lahat ng kailangan nyo from the employee, lahat ng mga kailangan ayusin, kunin na ninyo or kung kunwari may kailangan ba siyang ituro for for other for other employees or i turn over the files or or nako may kailangan ipagbilin, go ahead, do it within the 30 days. Okay? So make the use uh, make the most out of the 30 days kasi the 30 days isn't just for the employee, it's also for you. Now, may mga tanong usually dyan. Attorney, uh, nung nag-inform kami kasi, naghanap na ng ibang trabaho, um, would it be possible na pakawalan ko na lang earlier? Okay. Um, ito medyo gray area, guys. Why? Kasi kung sakaling kasuhang kayo with the dole, ang unang i-check is, did you comply with the 30 days? What if siya mismo yung umalis? Okay, so you would have to go through the process of proving na parang, well, yung, yung empleyado po kasi, sir, ang voluntarily umalis kasi nakahanap na ng trabaho. Okay, so I'm going to be, to be making a recommendation for you guys, medyo conservative, going all the way to aggressive. Okay, so what's the conservative stance, attorney? Ako, bibigay ko na yan. Kasi parang tinanggalan mo na ng trabaho, di ba? Ibibigay ko na yung sweldo for that period kung sakali. Uh, what's the moderate stance? Well, kakausapin ko yung empleyado na parang, oh, uh, may 15 days ka pa to report. Um, are you asking me if it's possible na hindi ka na, uh, hindi ka na mag-report? If you are, please send a letter to, ano, to, uh, please send a letter to management asking kung pwedeng uh, 15 days na lang yung i-report mo. Okay. And what's the aggressive stance? Okay. Again, as I told you guys, for the next 30 days, walang pinagkaiba yung tao sa ibang empleyado ninyo. So kung hindi siya biglang pumasok, I can actually cite them for AWOL. Okay. Attorney, among all of those remedies, what would you recommend? I'll probably go with the conservative. Guys, paalis na to eh. And considering na pandemic, lahat na pwede ko ibigay sa empleyado, I would probably give it. Pero kung masama ang ugali ng empleyado na hanggang dulo talagang pasaway, then you might want to consider the uh, aggressive methods. Just make sure it's in line with the procedures talaga para hindi ka mapahama. Okay? Next. So, 
So after the 30 days, Atty, ang dapat lang ba nilang matanggap would be the last pay for the 30 days? No. Ang sinasabi po ng batas, dahil, oh, remember yung pinag-usapan natin ha, just causes, authorized causes. Just causes, sino may kasalanan na naalis yung empleyado? Di ba, empleyado, may ginawang kalukohan, kaya siya natanggal. Authorized causes, Walang ginawang masama yung empleyado na taon lang na circumstances are preventing the continuation of the employment. So ang sinasabi ng batas, kung magtatanggal po tayo ng empleyado based on authorized causes, magbigay po tayo ng pal- palubag-loob. Pampalubag-loob, attorney, uh, I can't find that in the labor code. You won't kasi ang technical term for pampalubag-loob under the labor code is separation pay. That's how I explain it to my students and my clients. Ang separation pay po, pampalubag-loob. Ah, okay. So, so attorney, does this mean na pag uh, just causes for termination, hindi mo kailangan bigyan ng pampalubag-loob kasi siya yung may kasalanan? Hindi po. Uh, separation pay is usually given only for uh, authorized causes for termination. Now, for our particular authorized cause, which is uh, retrenchment, attorney, how much do we need to pay? Okay, ito po, makinig ng maigi ha, very important kasi ang dami nagkakagulo rito. So under the labor code, ang nakasulat po is one month worth of pay or one month, a uh, one half uh, monthly wage, whichever is higher. Okay, medyo magulo, magulo pakinggan sometimes. Eh. So so here's a simple way of explaining that. Ang sinasabi po, di ba meron dito, one month pay. Then dito naman po, one half month pay for every year of service. Tinatanong lang po, alin dito yung mas mataas? So, it only kicks in if you're talking about um, employees na tumagal sa uh, empleyo ninyo. So, kunwari, yung empleyado po, uh, less than a year pumasok. So, kung, kung one half for every year of service, uh, one half months pay for every year of service, kung wala pang isang taon yung empleyado, Susul- uh, ibibigay natin one month, di ba? Wrong po. Kasi ang minimum na pwedeng ibigay, at least one month salary. Pumapalo po itong uh, one half month salary kung multiple years na pumasok na yung uh, empleyado uh, with you guys. More specifically, two years and up. Kasi two years and up, usually, uh, that's one half, one half month for every year of service, magkatapat na sila. So kung kunwari, three years uh, worth of service ang ginawa, anong i-apply natin? One month? Or kung three years, di ba? One half for every year of service. So one half times three, so that's 1.5, correct? So for three years of service, you will be giving the employee 1.5 uh, months worth of pay, a separation pay. Kasi ito yung higher. Hopefully, Hopefully that uh, clears it up, okay? Pagdating sa computations. Um, if you need more help with that, uh, may mga nakikita ako actually infographic. Maganda eh. Um, uh, they cla- from Dole, they classified the different kinds of separation pay applicable. Depende kung ano yung authorized cost na gagamitin mo. Guys, take note pala ha. Iba-iba po ang separation pay rate na ginagamit for different kinds of authorized causes for termination. For retrenchment, I'm saying it right now, one half month's pay for every year of service. Okay? So, pero hindi ka pwede bumaba ng, ng uh, one month. Okay. Uh, huh. hmm, I'm seeing a question. Okay, mamaya ko na lang sasagutin. Ha? Ipunin na lang natin mamaya. Kasi I, I, there's a couple of things I want to get through. Uh, at least makover natin. Now, attorney, uh, paano kung kinasuhan pa rin kami? Sinunod naman namin lahat ng sinasabi sa labor code pero kinasuhan pa rin kami. How do we handle that? Kaya po important, kanina ko pa pinupokpok, yung importance ng documentation. Pinadala mo ba yung notice sa dole? Pinadala mo ba yung notice sa empleyado? Did you guys compute the separation pay properly? Kasi ito po exactly yung mga bagay na hahanapin ng dole or ng NLRC with you assuming that the case comes up. Wala naman pong problema. Uh, wag po kayo matakot kung sakaling kasuhan. No problem as long as you're able to provide the proper documentation. NLRC will side with you. Kasi NLRC recognizes that this is a right reserved to employers. Di ba? As long as you follow the tips that I I gave earlier today, I don't see any problems as long as you can justify na marami naman kaming ginawang tri- uh, trial na solutions eh, pero wala talaga eh. Ito na lang talaga yung solution. Otherwise, magsasara yung kumpanya. 
NLRC will understand. Of course, NLRC will try to explore na, oh, baka naman pwedeng ganito muna or, or transfer mo muna or, or ganito. They will try to find solutions for you, uh, with you. But if it's not possible, uh, well, I think you guys should be honest with the mediator in case. Okay? So wala pong problema yon if ever. Now, I want to move on. Okay, so, so, so hopefully nasagot ko na lahat ng tanong ninyo when it comes to the legal way of doing retrenchment. Kasi papasok na tayo dito. How do you do it fairly? Okay, so nasagot na natin. At ini, pwede bang mag-retrench? Pwede po. Uh, as long as you comply with all of the stuff that I discussed. How do you do it fairly? Okay, and, and, that, and that has to do with the question, attorney, basically, paano ko pipiliin kung sino sa mga empleyado ko yung tatamaan, yung tatanggalin ko? Okay, what don't you do? Ano yung wag na wag nyong gagawin? Random. Hindi pong, ewan ko, kukuha kayo ng mga pangalan ng empleyado tapos bubunot kayo galing sa sa balota kung sino tatamaan. I think that's very insensitive. Uh, please avoid doing random stuff kasi you have to be able to choose a standard that's fair bago ka pumili kung sino yung tatanggalin and random it will not help moral guys it will not uh, parang napaka masyado namang ano nun masyadong ang tra trato mo sa mga tao parang inanimate objects eh. parang wala hindi sila tao di ba? parang inventory lang na hiraraffle of uh, I disagree with that uh, your situation might be different, but I think it's very insensitive and inhumane. I don't recommend that. So, attorney, what do you recommend in the first place? Okay. So, from my experience, and daming employers na na mum problema na attorney. Paano ko malalaman kung sino yung tatanggalin, sino yung pipiliin? Okay. There is a step that most people miss, and ito ipapaalala ko na po. Why not ask your employees? Kasi Believe it or not, may mga empleyado po na actually nahihiya lang to bring it up. So para hindi ka mamroblema kung sino yung mga tatamaan ng retrenchment, why not open the discussion muna? Meron bang gustong voluntarily mag-resign? That way you can create a separation package for them. Kung ano man yung ibibigay sana ninyo as separation pay, imbis na idadaan nyo ng retrenchment, mag-resign na lang kayo, I'll give the equivalent if not more. Bawas po sa sakit ng puso at sakit ng ulo ninyo kung sakaling voluntary, mag-resign na lang po yung ibang empleyado. Again, the magic word here is voluntary. Eh, attorney, parang nahihiya ako i-open in discussion. Well, mahala ka. All I'm saying is, from my experience, if you open up the topic, baka ikaw ang magulat na meron palang mga nag na. Because, ladies and gentlemen, let's face it, ang dami pong empleyado, takot right now talagang pumasok but nahihiya lang to open it up with their employers. So if you have those kinds of employees within your ranks, then diba, at least they self-select. Bawas, uh, bawas na po yung kailangan problemahin. Now, attorney, I tried that. I opened up the discussion, pero wala pong pumayag. So how do I choose kung sino po sa team namin yung uh, isa subject namin to retrenchment? Okay, so here are a few things. Number one, May committee ba kayo uh, where in management and employees are represented? Uh, you might want to involve them in this decision. Diba? So, itipon po ninyo yung management uh, employee committee and then try to come out with ways wherein pwedeng pumili fairly kung sino yung uh, masasubject to retrenchment. What is my recommendation? So, kung kunwari, nakaupo na kayo dyan. Uh, committee kayo kunwari, ah, kausap nyo ako, pina invite ninyo ako sa committee meeting so you're asking me attorney what are some standards that we can use para fair naman po yung pagpili kung sino yung tatamaan ng retrenchment first na sasabihin ko sa inyo is try to go for employment status so attorney anong ibig mo sabihin hindi po lahat ng empleyado pare-pareho po yung status so yung mga medyo least preferred statuses yun ang unahin ninyong tanggalin Attorney, ano ibig mo sabihin? Okay. Do you have probationary employees right now versus regular? Meron ba kayong mga project employees versus regular? I would probably protect yung mga regular. So, ang uunahin ko for consideration, yung mga probationary, yung mga uh, project, I would probably protect yung regular status. So, that's one standard that you can utilize. Does it make sense? For me, yes. Kasi between a probationary and uh, uh 
regular employee, I would much uh, it makes much more sense legally to protect yung mga regular na. Okay, so attorney, that's a very good starting point. May iba ka pa pang standards na marirecommend? Yes, meron pa. Another thing is performance. So kung kunwari, pare-pareho na itong ano, regular, paano ako pipili kung sino dyan? Uh, well, titik ko yung performance, di ba? Yung mga high performers, I will protect you. Those with low performances, I will probably consider you for uh, uh, as candidates for retrenchment if ever. Okay, so attorney, pwede pala yun. So you go for employment status, you go for for uh, performance, pwede mo ipagsama yun. Yeah, pwede. Uh, you can do a hybrid. Actually, may pangatlo pa akong level na pwedeng i-recommend. Um, the final one could be seniority. Again, could be guys, ha? kasi these are standards that you can uh, uh, choose from. Uh, uh, so between two employees, sino ang i-retain ko? Pwedeng gamitin yun ng standard, sino yung mas matagal sa kumpanya? Because... Well, ostensibly, that shows loyal, di ba? So for me, uh, it makes sense to reward loyal employees. Okay, so I, I gave you three examples. Again, um, again, it's up to you to choose what kind of standard you want to apply. Ang point ko lang, guys, choose a fair standard. Hindi, wag na wag na wag min yung gagawin. Ito ha, pinagsasabihan ko na kayo. Wag yung random at wag favoritism. Wag. Ah, kasi ano to eh, paborito to ni boss eh, or, or bata to ni, ni ganito. No, no, that's not a way to run a retrenchment program. There has to be an objective standard na pinagbasihan. Otherwise, you can find yourselves vulnerable to a, a case for uh, discrimination. Kung sakali, delikado po. So, pick a standard. Mas kampante po ako kung yung kliyente ko or yung standard may na-identify. And if you guys can put it down in writing and yun yung lumabas, as a result of sorting your your employee list, then ayun, uh, very, ano yun, very I, I think that's a fair way of going about the retrenchment procedure. Is that clear, guys? I, I'd like to hear from you sa chat box. Okay ba? Kung nakakahabol, pasabi naman, nakakahabol po. Ayan, okay, clear naman clear po. Na Oh yes, authority. Uh, daw po sila. In case you guys don't uh, feel it, we're actually compressing uh, siguro around uh, three to four months of law school in one afternoon. <laughs> Medyo mahaba pong pinag-uusapan to sa law school, but uh, I'm doing my best to to simplify things for you guys. Okay, so in, in case may mga malabo po, let me know so that we can clarify and we can slow down. Okay, now this brings me to the final area and that is how to do it in a humane way. So attorney, iba pa pala yun sa legal, fair, humane. Oo, oh, makatao. Diba? Huwag natin kakalimutan yung pagiging makatao kasi at the end of the day guys, you're dealing with people. This is not just a uh, legal exercise. Oo nga, karapatan mo but but imagine what it does for your team's morale. Huwag naman natin pababayaan yung mga uh, tao na just because you I exercised my right under the labor code. Nakalimutan mo na na tao ka usap mo. So, so attorney, what are your tips? Paano, uh, paano natin i-respect yung humanity uh, aspect of retrenchment? Number one, how do you deliver the message? So, um, from experience, ang ina-advise ko sa mga kliyente ko, guys, if you're undergoing retrenchment, I would probably set a meeting with the employees. Huwag niyong gagawin na parang yung notice ninyo for... for uh, retrenchment, biglang matatanggap na lang nila sa bahay or 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 magugulat na lang sila na na meron na walang walang pasabi-sabi. Masakit po 'yun sa empleyado, um, especially in COVID season, 'di ba? Parang lahat nga takot na and then biglang makakatanggap ka lang. What I would advise, ipatawag po ninyo to a meeting. Explain at least take the time na maipakita sa kanila all of the efforts that were made to try and save the position, pero talagang wala eh. At least give them the respect and the time. Kaya yung tignan diretso sa mata to say na we did everything, pero pasensya ka na, ito talaga yung kinalabasan. And if you want, you can serve the letter there. But for me, just the letter, masakit po yun. If you can, if you can include the human touch to be able to mitigate the effect emotionally, that would be preferred. And you might be asking, attorney, paano ko ba pipigilan na, ano, na kasuhang kami? That's the secret. Most of the employees, from my experience po, na pumupunta ng dole para mag-file ng case, 
ang feeling kasi nila napapayaan sila or binasto sila ng management. By treating your employees with respect, you're, you're actually reducing the probability na kakasuhan po kayo. Trust me guys, this is something uh, my team and I deal with on a weekly basis and, and respect goes a long way talaga. Most of the time, yung mga nagkakaso po, para mang inis na lang ng manage, management eh. Kasi feeling nila nabasto sila. Take that out of the equation, babawas po yung probability na kakasuhan kayo. So, so, so take the time to talk to your employees. That's one. Number two, dun sa letter, di ba? Remember I told you guys kanina na you, tra- you should inform them kailan yung last day, um, uh, ito yung 30 days, uh, na, na nag-decide po yung management, na tanggalin sila via retrenchment. I would add something po very crucial. Kung sa letter po, bibigyan nyo ng respeto yung mga tao and you actually replicate in the letter the efforts that the company went through to try and save your job. Malaking bagay po yun. At least bigyan niya yung pampalubag-loob yung mga empleyado ninyo with the satisfaction knowing that the management tried to protect them. Management tried to do everything in their power to try and retain the position. Okay, so if you were able to put that in writing, that would go a long way. As I told you in the first part, the law requires that the employers are uh, uh, have exhausted all other means. Kung baga, last resort po yung pagre-retrench. So, and, and this advice here replicates that. Kasi kung kunwari, pumunta po ng NLRC, ng DOLE, nag-complain, eh nakita po nung ano, taga-check, nung mediator, oh, eh ginawa naman pala lahat ng kumpanya, uh, uh, lahat ng possible remedyo, pero hindi talaga eh. That would uh, strengthen your legal position. Because again, retrenchment is a final option. If you're able to incorporate all of the other solutions that you tried into the notice itself, it will strengthen it. Attorney, is that required? It's not. Ang requirement lang po under the labor code, uh, notification of uh, retrenchment, 30 days before, and then yung effectivity date. I'm teaching you best practices na out of experience. Ilagay po ninyo lahat ng sinubukan ninyong gawin. While it's not a legal requirement, it will strengthen your position. Now, another thing, I'm very big on being generous with employees. Again, um, remember, just causes may ginawang kalokohan yung empleyado. Ito, wala akong pakialam dyan. <laughs> Parang, minsan pinapagalita ko pa yung empleyado, yung kliyente ko. Parang, wag ka magbibigay ng ano yan, pera. Kasi you're actually tolerating it. Uh, uh, iba yung dating yan sa mga empleyado na kahit pala magnakaw kami, kahit may gawang kami yung kalukuhan sa kumpanya dahil mabait si boss, may makukuha ka pa rin. No, you don't. But for authorized uh, terminations, I, I try to encourage my clients to be as generous as possible. Here's a caveat. Okay. So, di ba, bibigay ninyo yung last pay. Uh, kunwari, uh, kinocompute na natin, kunwari, uh, paalis na eh. So, last Pay, yung mga unavailed of na SIL, yung mga leaves, and then of course yung separation pay. Attorney, what do I call kung sakaling gusto kong mag-abot lang? Do not, I repeat, do not call it separation pay. Huwag niyong pasakitin yung ulo ng mga practitioners kagaya ko. Why? If you call it separation pay, separation pay has a technical meaning under the labor code. And dahil yung iba pong, um, uh, iba pong mga HR or clerk, eh, hindi alam ko ano yung tatawag. Uy, eh, si separate naman po, po ito from employment. Eh. So, ipasok na natin under separation pay. Wag po. It, it leads to more confusion. Ang nagiging net effect po, from my experience, ha, kahit na yung mga taong nasa just uh, causes for uh, termination, kapag ano, uh, nagkaso po sa NLRC, humihingi ng separation pay. So, tinatanong ko, ano po ang basis ninyo? Eh, na-separate ako, di ba? <laughs> So so I want to do away with that. If you're going to give separation pay, make sure that it's separation pay under the labor code. Kung magbibigay kayo ng tulong, you call it by the proper term, which is financial assistance. Huwag niyo pong paguluhin ang buhay natin lahat. Call it what it is, financial assistance. Don't lump it together with separation pay. Now, attorney, pwede ba ako magbigay ng... Uh, 
Pwede ba ako magbigay ng financial assistance? Yes, there's nothing preventing you under the labor code from doing so. In fact, encouraged pa po ng labor code. Uh, the more help you can provide employees, the better it would be. And actually, nire-recognize po yan ng uh, NLRC at saka ng Dole. Kung sakaling nakatanggap po ng financial assistance, they take it into consideration, assuming po na mag-complain yung empleyado. So again, it strengthens your position that you had nothing to hide. Clean hands, di ba? You had nothing to hide. You had every intention to help. Nataon lang po na talagang ito po yung economic climate natin ngayon. Wala ako magawa. Kailangan ako magtanggap ng tao. Now, what's another thing that you can do on the humane basis? Okay. Attorney, what's, what are your thoughts on rehiring? Uy, magandang tanong, di ba? Kasi hindi naman tayo hopefully forever na ganito na, na COVID, pandemic. What if uh, things start getting better? Kapag nandiyan na yung vaccine, di ba? Uh, ayan, medyo may pag-asa na. What are your thoughts about rehiring? Ako lang, ha? To be humane about it, yung mga tinanggal ko, kung sakali, they will be given priority for rehiring. I will prioritize them. Kapag medyo okay na yung takbo ng negosyo, I would probably uh, put their names, contact details in a separate pile. Once maging okay, kailangan ko ng tao, automatic kayo yung una kong kukunin. That's a humane way of treating them. Or kung ako mismo, hindi ko kayo kayang i-rehire, what I tell my clients and my students, guys, yung mga for retrenchment, try to help them uh, get employment from your network. So kung kunwari, ako, I'm in the manufacturing sector, uh, eh, nagbawas talaga ng demand. So, so nagtanggal ako ng tao here. More often than not, may mga kasamahan ako na tuloy-tuloy naman yung operations and nangangailangan ng tao. So one option that you guys can explore would be to compile the people that you retrenched in a list, get their permission kung pwede ninyong ialok sila for other prospective employers. At yun, bakit naman kailangan ko pa magpaalam data privacy? Kasi you'll be disclosing their details to other people. Um, I've seen this in some Facebook groups. Actually, mabente. Eh. Um, the recent one that I saw was, uh, ang sabi dun sa post, Hi guys, does anyone need a pool of web designers? I have a list ready here. Naku, Diyos ko, tinatad yung ano, comments na, me, 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 send me the list. So, ako na yung napagod, tinurn off ko na yung notifications. But sabi ko, oh, I, I like the spirit there. Kasi parang ako mismo, I won't be able to accommodate these people, but there are some people ready to uh, absorb it. Kasi guys, um, don't be mistaken na parang ngayon dahil COVID, walang naghahanap ng empleyado. Actually, marami pong opening right now. You just have to know where to look. And if you can help your employees uh, who got retrenched, uh, make that transition, I think they will value that a lot. And that would go a long way uh, towards uh, helping them recover. So, in summary, okay, so yung pinagdaanan po natin, ha, uh, tatlong areas po, legal. Attorney, pwede bang magtanggal? Yes, and we went through the whole process of uh, how retrenchments work. Uh, what's the uh, process required na may notification ka? Ano ba yung separation pay? And how it would look? If you guys missed that, pwede namang i-replay mamaya. Next part is we discussed the fair way of doing it. Paano pipiliin kung sino yung mga tatamaan or may involve sa retrenchment program? Ang takeaway doon, you can choose whatever metric you want as long as you stick to a fair standard. Pili ka, how did you guys do it? Hindi pwedeng random, hindi pwedeng dahil paborito or kakilala or malakas dito. You have to pick a fair standard para hindi po kayo pwedeng tamaan ng discrimination accusations. And then finally, humane. Huwag po natin kalimutan, we're dealing with uh, uh, people here. Uh, let's not treat them as if they're inventory or inanimate objects. There's a people component here. So, so the takeaway there is try to give your employees respect in uh, the process. And that would probably minimize the possibility that uh, you will get hit with uh, NLRC cases after. Okay. So uh, that is my presentation. Uh, Irish, ayan, saktong-sakto, 4 o'clock. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Attorney Irwin. I think, well, everyone, a big hand to our speaker, Attorney Irwin Sagala. You know what, Attorney? 
questions are piling up as of now. Marami na ba? <laughs> But before that, Attorney, Attorney Sam, we will just pause for a moment for a quick break and then um, we'll answer the questions. So everyone, guys, we will pause for a moment. Please stay tuned and we will be right back. Ah, by the way, uh, Irish, I have a special uh, gift for those of you guys who will be back after the, uh, the break. So stay tuned for that. Please stay tuned on that. Okay. Okay. Two minutes. Every coffee needs a lotus. questions please allow me first to greet our viewers who are watching right now um all the way from albay bacolod baguio bulacan 
Cabanatuan, Cagayan de Oro, Cavite, Cebu, Coron, Palawan. Wow. Davao, Iloilo, La Union, Laguna, Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu. Nueva Ecija, Quezon Province, and Tarlac. Thank you for joining us today. And of course, I would like to greet as well Ms. Terecor Masilang from Rizal. She's watching at our um, FB Live. Um, of course, learning Joan Adarna. She's watching from Hawaii and Lizzie Sakurong Flores. Hello, hello, hello there. And now let's start our Q&A portion. For Zoom participants, please type in your questions at the Q&A box. Okay. For Zoom live questions, please click the raise hand button to notify the administrator and I will call on your name. And for our Facebook and YouTube live viewers, please type in your questions at the comment box. <laughs> So let's start. Mm, Irish, I, I just wanted to make a yes. comment. Uh, there's a comment here na natuwa naman ako from Josile Alvarez. So thank you, Attorney Zag. It was explained so, so clearly. Yeah, no need for PowerPoint. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I really took the effort na ipa simplify. I, I'm glad you guys are you know, finding Actually, it useful. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, from anonymous attendee, can an employer retrench an employee with immediate effect? and just include the monetary equivalent of 30-day notice along with the separation pay. Mm, okay. Agad-agad, so, Attorney. Mm -hmm. There's a gray area there. Kasi, uh, how do I explain this? Uh, ang sinasabi kasi sa uh, labor code, uh, di ba 30 days, uh, uh, kailangan nandun yun uh, to be able to, well, number one, allow the employee to look for work, di ba? And actually, there's another... Uh, basis for that. The 30 days is there to allow the dole to investigate if ever tama ba yung, yung claim na ginagawa mo. So for me, eh, uh, a safer way of doing this, uh, uh, pwede ba na yung effectivity date, if you shorten ko, then babayaran ko na to. Safer way, I'll just treat it as the 30 days, pero hindi mo kailangan pumasok. So, so, Effectively, I think it will be the same. Na parang, okay, employee isn't there, hindi nagre-report. Uh, if you want to go look for work outside, uh, go ahead. Okay na. But you have complied with the 30 days and allowing uh, the government to do a double check in case they choose to. So, so meaning parang uh, work from home sila, attorney. Parang ganun. Pwede rin. Because pwede of, rin. Some, some businesses, um, yung non-essentials are closed, ba? temporarily closed. Hindi true. pwede magbukas. So, Paano sila magpapasok ng employee? Yes. And and another thing that I'm 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 thinking of here is uh what is the ano uh, what's the benefit ko sa kali na uh, you just want the employee out of your payroll or or gusto niyo mabigyan na ng clearance parang wala ako nakikita masyadong advantage. So so if it were me I would probably go with the more conservative side on paper at least uh, I'll keep it to the 30 days, sasagarin ko yun para anytime that the dole wants to counter check or, or make clarifications, it's available, empleyado mo siya for the next 30 days, but you don't have to ask them to report. I, I think see, that's attorney, a, I have comments uh, here to lessen the emotional pain sa employee and para di na daw po masabotahin yung work just in case. Sure. As I told you guys, di ba, pwede namang hindi na ninyo ipag-report. But in so far as the employment on paper is concerned, yung 30 days kailangan pasok po yun. Or you can actually uh, limit the participation of the employee within the workplace. Uh, uh, there are some people na kung sakaling pinapasok yung employee na for retrenchment, ang ginagawa po, binibigyan ng ibang assignment outside or they have them process the clearance or siguro uh, hanggang sa files lang, hindi na po pinaka, pinapahawak ng active cases. Uh, uh, I won't be able to give a comprehensive na sagot dito because uh, this question, it's not just on the legal side, it also touches on the operational side. And on the operational side, I will defer to you guys on how to uh, limit the risk. Kasi syempre, operations na yan, labas na yung Labas na yung legal dyan. You guys are the experts when it comes to uh, uh, managing operational issues. Okay, so yun lang. Uh, siguro, uh, I don't think I will be able to give an answer for everyone, Irish. But for me, safer talaga. Just keep it for the 30 days and then limit participation if needed. 
Okay, thank you, Attorney. Irish, do you so, mind if I uh, choose some of the questions? May mga nadaanan sure, sure. ako okay, na okay. actually nagustuhan ko. Eh. Sabi ko, uy, okay to. I think maraming matutulungan to. Okay, so the next one is... Okay, the next one is, what's the best way to explain that their contract ended because of not meeting the regularization criteria? They are probationary and they can't accept uh, be accepted because uh, company is just minimizing expenses. Nako, okay. <laughs> Medyo magkaiba po ito, ha? Okay, so... so Guys, I'll give you guys a free crash course on labor law. Medyo labas na to sa, sa topic, but but it's very important that you guys understand this. Uh, and it means a lot to me kung solid yung um, understanding you here. Okay, for probationary employees, what rights do they have, yung probationary? The probationary employees have similar rights to... Uh, uh, any other kind of employee, di ba? Okay, so ano lang ang pinagkaiba pagdating sa probationary employee? If they fail to reach the criteria for regularization, under the law, they're fair game. Pwede mong tanggalin for failure to meet standards. Kaya lang, medyo may nakikita akong problema dito sa tanong, uh, anonymous attendee. Kasi what you guys are saying is, uh, hindi performance ng probationary employee yung pinag-uusapan natin. Ang pinag-uusapan po natin here is hindi sila pwedeng matanggap kasi walang pera ang uh, kumpanya right now to absorb them. Now, legally, kung ako yung abogado ng probationary employee, unang thinking ko dyan, sandali, walang, walang kasalanan ng kliyente ko. ba? Kasi... Kung ganun na situation, it appears to me that they are complying with the standards for regularization. Now, if tatanggalin mo because walang pera, then the proper ground would be retrenchment. So magkaiba po yun, di ba? So pag tinanggal mo yung probationary employee because hindi po nag-comply sa standards, no need for separation pay, hindi ka, nag, hindi ka nag-passive. But if you take them out as a result of... Uh, uh, losses or kakapusin talaga ng pera, then I would I would say that they should be subjected to the same benefits as if uh, uh, they were any other uh, retrenched employee. So, so magkakasiparin should be. Meaning, attorney Zag, uh, even proba- probationary employees are entitled for separation pay. In my opinion, yes. Kasi there, the law didn't make a distinction naman. And, and um, ang thinking kasi namin, kung walang distinction na pwede namin pag pagpasihan uh, we'd rather go to the safer side so that's that's how i uh, treat it again uh, kung sakaling may probationary employees ka na well medyo may mga supply sa sa performance then use that diba pero tanggalin natin with the proper ground uh, ang wag na wag po nating gagawin nako kulang ng pera yung kumpanya Nako, eh, kailangan natin magtipid. Eh, Magkarap ka ng probationary dyan, tapos gawaan mo na lang ng performance evaluation na, na patalo. We don't do that, guys. Yes, we don't. Pwede kayong balikan dyan. Ha? Uh, but that being said, kung sakaling may kakulangan man yung probationary, I think now would be a good time kung sakali na you hold them accountable for failure to qualify. At least makabawas. Again, kung valid lang ha, na meron, huwag kayo mag invento Bad yan, bad. <laughs> okay, we have Zoom live question from Mar Plaka. Mm-hmm. Can you please um, unmute your audio and enable your camera, Mar Plaka? Okay, again, Mar Plaka. Ayo ni Mark, ako na lang muna. If not, um, okay. What about Emily Joy Gakal? Miss Emily, are you ready to ask your question? L- let's just wait. I think she's just connecting. Please unmute your audio. Irish, actually may tanong din dito na I want to answer, ha? Sure, sir. Ah, yes. Okay. Is Emily, uh, are you ready? Yes, yes. actually, uh, good afternoon, authority. Good afternoon, po. Uh, good afternoon, Irish. Uh, actually, I already typed in my question. I was asking if it, it is okay to combine the criteria that you recommended earlier in one uh, 
um, group of retrenchment. For instance, you're planning to have retrenchment um, in two months. So is it okay to combine the status, voluntary performance, and seniority? For me, that would actually bolster your legal position. Mas gusto ko po yun. Kasi instead of using just one objective standard, isipin mo, pinaghalo-halo mo pa. And then kung may maisip ka pa na iba, as long as it's objective, and alam mo na, kaya mong i-defend, I don't see any reason, uh, Emily, why you shouldn't do it. Okay, attorney. Thank Combination you. is good. Okay, yan. Yeah. <laughs> Iris, ito pala, may mga sasagutin lang ako. Thank na, you, Ms. Emily. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure, sir. So ito nakita ko, uh, uh, anonymous attendee, can employers ask for volunteers when planning to retrench? I covered this in uh, part two of the talk. Yes, you can. And I wanted to add something to it. Guys, uh, warning lang, sometimes ang employer nababaliktad po ang dating. Nako, pinilit po kami na mag-resign or na, na ano, pinilit po kami ng employer namin na umalis. So, you want to ensure na kung sakaling meron po kayong call for voluntary, you have to emphasize voluntary uh, uh, resignation kung sakaling may gustong umalis. So, uh, the question you may be asking is, attorney, how do you do it? Well, easiest way is number one, pwedeng maglabas ka ng memo. Wherein, ayun, black and white, malinaw talaga. Na ito, voluntary po, walang pilitan kung sino lang po ang gustong consider for uh, uh, severance package, uh, please approach HR. So that's one, written. Number two, actually, pwedeng kung sakaling may town hall kayo, you can record it. You can record it. Wala naman pong masama na uh, uh, you have a recording of the offer. Again, ang iniiwasan po natin dito, yung tipong babalik ta rin po kayo sa dulo. Yan ang galit na galit ako. Yung parang yung employer, ginawa na nga lahat, uh, lahat ng pagpuprotekta sana sa emplo- employee, lahat ng, lahat ng uh, ways, nagbawas na sa marketing, nagbawas na sa procurement, pero at the end of the day, biglang babalik ta rin ang employee. It's very sad. So, so I want you to have uh, evidence showing that you ask for it voluntarily. Is that clear, guys? Very important yan, guys. Ha? You have to have evidence na pwedeng gamitin ang legal. Okay? Uh, there's another question here. I wish I'm taking over. Ha? Pasahin sa ka na. Sure, sir. <laughs> Sige po. No problem. I feel very important. Uh, companies bankrupt and about to close. Do they need to pay the separation pay? What are your recommendations uh, when the company runs out of funds? You might want to take a look at another authorized cause for termination. Uh, kung sakaling nauubusan na po ng pondo yung kumpanya and magsasara na po ang tama po na authorized cause for uh termination, hindi na po retrenchment. Ang dapat pong ginagamit ninyo, closure na. Ngayon, kapag closure ang ginamit, no need for separation pay if the closure is as a result of financial losses. So for this uh, anonymous attendees question, uh, I think that would be the right course of action. Not retrenchment, wherein you have to pay separation pay. Kung talagang magsisis na po ng operations yung buong kumpanya, you might want to consider closure. Okay? Malaking pagkakaiba po yun. What if, attorney, Next. kung ano, yes. um, attorney, sorry to disrupt you. Um, what if, like, for example, um, every business is nowadays, tinatry nila to recover. Mm-hmm. But then, yun nga, uh, one thing is, nag-retrenchment. But, uh, the company is not, um, kumbaga parang hindi kaya to pay the separation pay of the retrenched employees. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but not so to the for, point na closure. Okay. So for me, uh, it can be up for negotiations. Practically speaking, guys, wala kasing sinasabi sa labor code na, oh, na pwede naman pag-usapan yan, but in practicality, you, can, you, you actually can. So, so kung sakaling wala talaga perang kayang ilabas na isang bulto, what I would recommend, company, kausapin na lang ninyo na maayos yung employee, na parang employee, eto, this is the payment plan. Bigyan nyo kasi ng plano, na tipong pwede bang mag-installment kami, or kahit kalahati, ilalabas ko na, and then ito, uh, pwede naman na, na i-installment plan natin. If the employee agrees, no problem. I'm not seeing any problem there. Uh, uh, usually, hindi lang nako consider to ng mga employers kasi hindi nila alam na, ay, pwede palang pag-usapan. 
Yan. So, so try to talk it out. Assuming na hindi pumayag, well, legally speaking, guys, you are liable for that. As the employer, uh, wala akong magagawa about it. Uh, that's the labor code speaking. So, pag tinanggal mo, that, the, the uh, yung dulo ng 30 days, that entitles them to that amount. So, from that day, moving forward, liable ka na. So, ayun, that's it. That's the reality of that. Okay. Okay. Ay, ito. Maganda to. How does separation pay differ from severance pay? Okay. Number one, separation pay kasi nasa labor code. Severance pay, wala po. Uh, severance pay, it's a term used by some companies na minsan, uh, o oh, ito yung itatawag namin dun sa ibibigay naming package. So, wala pong specific definition about severance pay. So, kung ako tatanungin ninyo, attorney, what's the technical term? Well, separation pay ang alam namin. Yun yung training namin sa labor code. Eh, ano po yung severance pay? Eh, tanong mo kung saan mo narinig. Kasi it can differ between companies. Okay? So, uh, ako naman, from my experience, severance pay sometimes refers to parang financial assistance. Eh, na tipong after yung final pay, after yung... Separation pay, nagbibigay pa ng bulto na amount na pampalupag-loob. Usually, that is what it pertains to. But again, uh, nagbabago-bago po ng definition depending on the company. You might want to ask the company uh, uh, which is involved in this for their own particular uh, definition. Next question here, are there risks about putting employees on furlough? Okay. So, furlough, ginagamit siya na term usually in the states. Anong ibig sabihin ng furlough? Furlough, parang pahinga ka muna, uh, wala kaming maibigay na trabaho. Or, or uh, more often than not, parang ang dating niyan, floating status. Floating status, may trabaho ka pa, pero hold ka muna, hahanap kita ng assignment. Maximum six months. Retrenchment, wala na talaga, suko na ako. Uh, tatanggalin na kita from from the team kasi suko na ako na mahahanap kita ng trabaho. So, so are there risks? Well, uh, uh, yes, pero this is not the the venue for that kasi we're talking about retrenchment here. I just wanted to make a distinction because furlough is sometimes uh, used to uh, describe retrenchment as well. Ayun. So, magkaiba po kasi retrenchment at floating status. Okay. Uh, Irish, ito may, may tanong dito na gusto ko. Angelica de la Cruz. So one of our personnel has not been reporting to work from March 17 to date. Uh, we have tried sending him a memorandum, notice of specific charge with an order to explain. We will also send a notice of admin hearing, uh, but we believe he will not receive the letter. Is this a cause for termination? Okay. Um, medyo difficult topic, but Marami kasi empleyado takot ngayon pumasok. Aminin na natin, um, uh, times are different right now. Marami pong empleyadong takot. Now, ang tanong po is, employers, may right ba kami, uh, yung employers, nagtatanong, attorney, may right ba kami na pabalikin yung mga empleyado namin sa trabaho? So, before that uh, can be answered, may tanong ako dun sa employer. Number one, nag-comply ka ba dun sa regulations na binigay na uh, dole at saka ng DTI it's yeah, the interim know. guidelines for uh, for uh, operations right now so so yung mga yung office ba may pinoprovide sample ah uh, nagpinoprovide pa kayo na hand sanitizers alcohol nililinis ba lahat may distancing ba lahat ng mga ano ng mga areas ng uh, mga empleyado ninyo hindi ba sila nagkakahawaan ng hininga because they're too close um uh as long as you can assure me that you are complying with uh, the interim guidelines for operations right now issued by the DOL and the DTI, then that gives you the right to compel workers to come to work. Now, may dagdag dyan na, ano, may dagdag dyan na complication. Are you guys aware na uh, MECQ tayo uli bukas? <laughs> Tomorrow. So sa mga Start hindi pa nakakasagap ng balita, uh, balik MECQ tayo bukas guys, ha? NCR and mga kalapit na provinces. And what's the implication? Wala na naman tayong transportation. So so my question here is, itong taong to, bakit ba ayaw bumalik ng trabaho? E baka naman talagang walang masakyan. Ibang usapan kung lahat ng standards ginawa na ng kumpanya, but, ah, ginawa na ng kumpanya, plus, 
Diyos ko, may shuttle pa. Sinusundo na ng kumpanya. Kung ayaw pa rin, eh, ibang usapan na yan. ba? Diba? For me, I would probably uh, hold them accountable under AWOL. For those of you guys who need help with AWOL nga pala, you can just go to legalguide.ph. Uh, there's a course there. Uh, first three classes are free. Uh, I have a whole workshop on AWOL. So baka lang makatulong. Uh, Irish, remember that? <laughs> we discussed that in a previous uh, workshop. Apparently, meron pa rin pala. Yes, apparently may mga problem, uh, tao pa rin pala who are encountering problems with that. Oh, sandali. Irish, which reminds me, ayan, 425 na. And I wanted to offer some help for those of you guys uh, who are still struggling with this topic. Tanong ko muna, how many of you guys found this useful? Type it in the chat box. Useful ba? Useful? Useful? Type yes in the chat okay. box. I'm, I'm so, seeing yes. It's definitely useful, no. Atty. Oh. Now, the hard thing kasi with, uh, the hard thing with dealing with trimming down your team, uh, aside from the legal requirements, there's an emotional component. Eh. Masakit magtanggal na tao. So, um, ito pong tinuro ko sa inyo this afternoon, I want you guys to consider this as a last resort. Gawin na ninyo muna lahat before considering this as an option. Now, you might be asking, Attorney, ano ba yung ibang option na sinasabi mo na i-consider? Actually, mahabang usapan yan. And, and that's the reason why I'm, I'm coming out with a course soon. It's called Trim Your Team. Uh, Trim Your Team basically deals with 14 different remedies na pwede ninyong i-consider bago kayo magtanggal ng tao. Attorney, 14? Yes, 14. All, uh, uh, it, it stretches across the spectrum from light remedies to medium to heavy remedies. Yung heavy remedy, ito yung magtatanggal na tayo ng tao. Pero actually, bago ka magtanggal, ang dami pang pwedeng tignan kasi Irish na, na remedy. So I'm creating a course on that. That way, kung sakali mag-decide kayo to actually retrench your employees, you can be sure, parang inside yourself, na ginawa ko po lahat, uh, lahat yan kinonsider ko. So the name of the course is Trim Your Team. It's not yet ready. Um, I'm still trying to uh, gauge whether there will be enough demand. If you guys are interested, um, I'm sending a link. Uh, Jeff, link natin is here, no? It's in the chat box. If you want to sign up for the wait list for this course, uh, you can go to legalguide.ph slash Arriva2. Okay, so that's www.legalguide.ph slash Arriva2. I'm going to post sa uh, chat. Uh, uh, again, this is a wait list. Hindi pa po handa yung, ano, hindi pa po handa yung course. But the thing is, if you guys sign up right now, ito po ay ilalagay natin sa chat box. Okay. The link is here. Oops. Irish, kita mo? Pumaso? Yes, attorney. Ah, okay, good. So the thing is, um, if you sign uh, up, if you sign up using Arriva's link, I will give you a special price for that because of my partnership with Arriva. You, you guys will be getting a substantial discount when it comes out. And I'm planning to put up certain bonuses na kasama nung, nung course. Uh, first of all, I will have a full course on how to compute separation pay. Alam ko marami nagkakago doon dyan. <laughs> Parang, attorney, paano ba talaga to? So, so uh, I'll do a mini course. Isasama ko na lang doon with actual computation so that you guys get a feel for how separation pay actually works. And next, I will be uh, giving a special course on what standards you can consider for choosing whom to retrench. So uh, we discussed three ngayon, di ba? Employment status, performance, and uh, uh, seniority. I plan to do at least five and how to do it in a hybrid para at least you have a legally defensible uh, position of how you chose to uh, choose who gets retrenched within your team. Ayan, I hope that helps, guys. So uh, going back, legalguide.ph slash Arriva2. There's a sign-up sheet there. Uh, if you sign up today, I would know that you guys are with Arriva, and I'll be giving you a special coupon uh, along with all of those bonuses. Okay. So Irish, I think that uh, that wraps everything up. It's 4.30. <laughs> Can we have uh, two more questions? Sure. Sige. Okay. So, 
This one is from anonymous attendee because some areas are now again back to MECQ. Yes. One of our employees asked for approval na siya ay di mo na papasok in the next two weeks. But the company provided staff house naman for the employees para di na sila uuwi. And yung work na naka-assign sa kanya is not possible for work from home arrangement. Mm -hmm. The management decided to disapprove the request of the employee. Question is, what if tinuloy nung employee na hindi pumasok for two weeks? Awal siya? Or can we remove the employee? Okay. Safest. Employee? Thank you, Irish. Safest way, EAA wall ko talaga to. Kasi kung binigay na ninyo lahat and then ayaw talaga. And you comply, I'm assuming that you guys complied with uh, the IATF guidelines. Eh, wala na talagang excuse dapat. Eh, kung sakaling hindi payaga ng management, I'm I, I'm I'm not seeing any excuse. Eh. Pasensya na po, but uh, we have to balance things, eh. di ba? Oo, natatakot kayo, pero at the same time, uh, businesses have to keep moving on. Eh. So hindi naman pwedeng puro yung gusto lang ng empleyado kasi lahat ng negosyo manlugi, di ba? <laughs> so we have to balance that out. Assuming you guys are compliant with the requirements, you can ask them to come in for work. If they don't want to, that can be grounds for A1. Okay, last question. I think sa, uh, from from Akadim po siya. Um, attorney in school setting, what about those teachers with existing employment contract? Is it possible to retren retrench them due to the decrease of en enrollment amid COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you. Okay, that's irrelevant. <laughs> okay, guys, there seems to be a misconception na eh, kung wala namang kontratang binigay yung employer ko, uh, hindi ako pwedeng i-retrench. Or babalik rin ko sometimes, ay, mga nagtatasyon sa website. Eh, eh, may kontrata ako eh, so hindi ako pwedeng i-retrench. That's irrelevant, guys. Uh, under the labor code, uh, an employment contract is not one of the requirements for an employer to exercise their rights. So whether may kontrata or wala, pwede pong maging subject to retrenchment. Okay? So, irrelevant po yun. Irrelevant. Patanggal na po sa isip natin na, eh, kung wala namang kontrata, uh, uh, hindi ako subject yan. Sometimes nga, Irish, ang nagiging discarte pa niyan. Attorney, kailangan ko ba mag-render ng 30 days pag nag-resign ako? Eh, hindi naman ako binigyan ng kontrata. Opo. <laughs> ako, oh, guys, ito ah, final nugget of wisdom. A, a fiscal contract is not required to be considered an employee. What matters is how you're actually uh, uh, being treated or ano ba talaga yung relationship ninyo. The physical contract is not a requirement. It's nice if you have it, but it's not fatal to your employment if wala. Same thing goes for retrenchment. Hindi po siya required. Yeah. Okay. Attorney, last one, last one. Oh, Anonymous yes. attendee, pag nag-draft po ng letter, sino po ang pipirma? Owner, corporate lawyer, HR, or manager? Pumili po kayo. Huwag lang po, janitor. <laughs> uh, the labor code doesn't actually specify kung sino yung gusto ninyong papirmahin. So it's, it's basically an exercise of management discretion whom the uh, company authorizes to release or to sign on these kinds of memos. So uh, ano yung mga sinabi? Corporate lawyer, correct? Owner. HR. Owner. Pwede. HR. Pwede. A corporate lawyer, pwede. Sino magde-decide? Management. So kung sino po yung sabihin ng management, yun po yung tamang sagot. Wag lang po, uh, kidding aside, wag lang po yung wala naman talagang authority na kaya sinabi ko, wag nyo naman ipapirma sa, sa janitor, di ba? Para lang may pumirma. Make it someone authorized. Di ba? And um, most probably the logical thing would be get someone who has authority over that person yung pagbibigyan natin. So, Possibly, it can be the, the immediate supervisor or it can be the manager. Okay. okay. Hope Attorney that got it. Last message to our viewers. Nuggets of wisdom. Okay. Guys, hindi porki right ninyo. Uh, basically, magkakaiba kasi yung tanong na sinagot natin this afternoon. Uh, first portion. Uh, attorney, pwede bang gawin? Pwede. Under the law, pwede. Attorney, uh, yung sa second portion, Fair. Attorney, paano ba gawin ng patas? O, ganito yun. And then, attorney, paano ba gawin makatao yung, ano, yung proseso? That's the humane part. Guys, hindi pwedeng pag nag-decide tayo sa legal lang. No. It has to be all three aspects 
for you to be able to carry out a balanced retrenchment program. Okay, I hope you guys uh, got the message and you treat your employees with respect and with humanity in case you uh, choose to go through this route. That's it. Okay, and everyone, a big hand to our speaker, Attorney Irwin Sagala. Thank you so much. We learned a lot from you today, Attorney mm -hmm. Sag, and hope to see you soon on our next e-learning sessions. Everyone, again, Attorney Irwin Sagala. Okay, Thank you, and guys. of course, this is not yet the end of our e-learning session because I have a few announcements to make. Arriva Academy would like to thank the following win-win partners, official media partner, Art Plus Magazine, digital media partners, Focus Media, Globotronics, CD Advertising Ventures, Outcom, Elevate Media. For win-win partners, thank you to Brother, Faber-Castell, Glutasi, Moringa O2, KFC, Mr. Donut, Tokyo Tokyo, Lotus Best Cup, Boss Job, Sir Technology Inc., Finma Properties, Salary Jet, Ilawi Korea, Kitosun and Carpo Consulting, Enchanted Kingdom, Disperse, Cosmotech Philippines Inc., Mindchomp's virtual preschool program to register your toddlers, please call them at 090-6486-0710 or email them at disokanabe at mindchomps.org. Essential Safety Products PH for your personal protective equipment for your health and safety compliance requirements, please email them at essentialsafetyph at gmail.com. And if you want to place your ads here, advertise your company, your services, your logo, have a brand exposure to thousands of viewers through FB, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Zoom, of course, email us at marketing at arriva.com.ph. Please stay on top of our insights and updates. Please stay connected. Visit us on our social media pages. Please join the Arriva Academy Facebook group, like the Arriva Academy Facebook fan page, follow the Arriva Academy LinkedIn page, and visit us on our website, it's www.ariva.com.ph. And if you missed watching the free e-learning session with Attorney Sagala and our previous e-learning sessions, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Ariva Academy and Ariva Talks. Again, it's Ariva Academy and Ariva Talks. For our upcoming online learning sessions, we would like to invite you this will be tomorrow, Business Rescue Project, Opportunity to Reinvent. Part one will be um, Start Up, Mentor Me, Opportunity to Reinvent Yourself. And of course, we have invited an international global keynote speaker, Mr. Vishnu Anaparadi from Malaysia. Tomorrow, don't forget, August 4. And of course, Work Smart, Not Just Hard, How to Boost your productivity at work. We have invited Mr. Jonathan Yabu, the Asia's Millennial Guru, to discuss this on Friday, August 7th. How to take on greater responsibility, step up skills for non-managers, and we will be having Mr. Howell Mabalot to discuss this session, August 11, Tuesday. Don't forget, effective technical writing and communication skills for performance excellence. We will be having Ms. Rory Sugai to discuss this session on August 12. Again, August 12, Wednesday. And of course, the 12 Employee Welfare and Fringe Benefits Virtual Forum. We have invited spokespersons from DOLE, SSS, Pag-IBIG, and PhilHealth. Please do join us again August 13. Don't forget for HR professionals out there, August 13. Cost-effective purchasing, sourcing, procurement management, and the new business normal. This will be on Friday, August 14. The intersection of human resource and accounting departments. This will be on August 14, Friday, and we will be having Mr. Orly Tugob to discuss the session. And please do save the dates. This will be on October 26 to 30. This is Arriva, Arriva's learning event, five-day virtual journey. We would like to invite you to the Asia's highly anticipated HR learning event, 
the Asia HRD Summit 2020, and the Philippine HR Congress 2020, Transcendence Converging People, Science, and Technology. For further details and uh, details to register, please email us at successseminars at arriva.com.ph. And if you want to invite Autor Nisad, our other um, Arriva partner speakers, please do call me at 0916-695-4418 for an exclusive um, e-learning session for your team, for your company. Please do also email me at irish.arivaacademy at gmail.com. And of course, thank you so much for being with us today. I hope that you learned a lot from Attorney Sagala. See you on our next free e-learning sessions and our um, upcoming learning sessions. Of course, don't, don't forget to uh, join us tomorrow, Business Rescue Project with Vishnu Anna Paradi. Again, this is Irish Malonda Samson. In Arriva, it's all about being better. Please stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.